Welcome to Rich Sports. Today we're going to be doing another tactics podcast. So welcome bath time. Welcome Amondi. Welcome G Wolf. We're going to be talking about the box midfield, which I have to admit I don't know too much about, but hopefully we're all going to learn a lot about it tonight. Um, I hope everyone's had a good weekend. Yeah, not bad. No. Oh, obviously, came Keep on the, the show comments. with you uh, on the Sunday. Apart from that, all good. And people in the comments, please get questions in about anything we're talking about because it does help. And if you need further explanation for anything, please get questions in because it will help with the, the podcast. Yeah, you can leave questions in the comments if for some reason you listen, you don't watch this show live and um, you need to watch something later. Maybe on a treadmill, but I doubt it. <laughs> we kick off. Yeah. Let's kick off. All right. Hello, everyone. Hello, Monday. How you doing, mate? Yeah, good. Thanks, bath time. Big up, Rich. Big up, uh, G Wolf as well. Big up, everyone in the comments. Um, hope everyone is doing well. Nice. Right, Amande, Your favourite thing for the last couple of months has been third man runs. Yeah, abs absolutely love them. Now, do you, do you get to use them with the Woodlands boys? Oh, my God. If only Twitter could go more than two minutes. I've got a video going out on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook right now. Just of uh, we won 8-3. Nice. The and they were doing third-man runs. So about three of the goals were third-man runs. And it all orchestrated for me the previous week from playing in that sort of uh, uh, number 10 role and linking things up. And now they've... <laughs> Run out there and batter the team around us 8 3 with third man runs. But yeah, obviously, I've been hyping it up. We used to do shows together, and um, I mean, I've learned so much about it, just explaining it in detail. And that's why I'm using that terminology now with my team. And um, I, I stole it from bath time, I pirated it. Um, you need to paint and paint <laughs> and stuff, but um, yeah, third man runs is my thing. But there, there's more to come, guys. Just tune in, yeah, Hashtag like copyright, yeah, copyright yeah. fee. I think it's more intellectual infringement, but I didn't come up with third man runs. I just like <laughs> like a, like a lot of things. It's just a basic football concept that people talk about as if they know what it is. And with Monday's experience, when you describe or explain what something is, you know he realizes, oh, I've done that. So I want to before we start on the box midfield. There's an overlap between a box midfield and third man runs. So I'm going to show my screen. Um, if I can press buttons and that in it. Um, so let me know when it's up. It's up. up. All right, cool. All right. Do you remember a couple of weeks ago, we talked um, about if you're pinning a player. Uh, yeah, that's big enough. That if you're pinning a player, you have to, that is the space where you work it. Right. Yeah. If you're going in that direction. Yeah. Right. If the ball gets played in, you have to, you have to work in that space there. Right, mm -hmm. is everyone happy with that? Yep. All right, cool. So with with a third man run, there are a couple of components to a third man run, and they are incredibly difficult to defend. Like, Amonde, do you think if um, a team did third man runs to you at Woodlands that you would have problems defending them? 100%. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Why? Um, yeah, we... we not really wise enough to sort of um, dictate what's going to happen. And with third man runs, I think, like you said before about the one twos, is you, you expect a one two. Some people play it passes into feet, knowing it's going to be a one two. There's only room for him to play it in return. But a third man run, you're having who do you pick up? I mean, no one knows what to pick up. They're ball watching half the time. So that's probably why. Yeah. All right. So one of the sort of tenants about um, possession play, right? which is what United are sort of moving to, what City and Arsenal play, um, is that you want to create... Um, you want to get an overload, but you want the overload in between the lines, right? So the point of a third-man run is to, um, is to break a line. So that's their block, and that's the line, is that we want... Should I do this the other way around? like this we want the third man this guy here to re to receive the ball beyond the line in space right so that he is facing towards goal 
Is that is that does everyone sort of understand that concept? No. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Okay. What you, you don't sound completely sure about it, G Wolf. So if you're not, just um, just ask. Sort of. <laughs> Do you want to? Can you explain it? Yeah. Can sure. Okay. So right, in um in sort of like modern football, you don't go man to man, right? Right. You, you use. No, yeah, it's kind of man orientated, but it's zonal and so forth. So you have a block, and the idea with the block is that you use your cover shadows d discipline um, to stop the ball getting played in between the lines, and that means that the ball just gets worked from side to side. And yeah. especially in the centre of the park, you can't allow balls in between the lines, right? Okay. You're yep. not allowed to do it. So the third man run concept is a combination that allows you to um, get one of your players through the line running into space. That's yeah. the objective. Yeah, that's the objective. Is that clear? Yeah, 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 yeah. Now it is. Now it is. Yeah. Okay. So what we would what we would have in a third man combination is we'll just pretend that the one is a nine. Um, is we have a triangle. You see this. You see um, how they're in a triangle structure. Yeah. What do you know? What the most important thing about a triangle is, like in football. In... No, not in football. But go on. Well, oh, but what's the most important thing about a triangle outside of football, Gene? <laughs> uh, well, all angles, isn't it? It's all. But it all lead to Rome. Um, all right, <laughs> yeah. I'm on what, what do what do we want from a triangle in um, in football? Think for you want different uh, positions, different angles where the players are positioned and not all in a straight line. It wouldn't be a triangle anyway, would it? But I think yeah. players have to be in different, no. as you, yeah, like, they're all in different positions there, not they're all, in, on all in lines. lines. Yeah, they're, they're all they're all on different lines. So when when you're um, when we talk about triangles and things, and we're going to talk a lot about triangles today, um, yeah. you you want them all on separate lines, right? And okay. the the idea is with the third man run is it's very simple is that you're going to use the one and the two to combine to release the three so i'll make it really really big so that it's much easier to see where everyone is so the two plays the ball to, to the one. one yep and the three has already moved on the blind side of his man and it's a simple layoff into yep. space that is one of the hardest things to defend in football because it is designed to basically be the antithesis of a block where with a block you don't follow your ma you you kind of follow your man but you don't break the block so where so as this guy moves off here the three um it's on his blind side will be asking someone else to come and deal with that but this combination, because it's premeditated, has happened so quickly that the guy is now in space. And yeah. if the one moves, he's turning the defence. And Amande, do defenders like being turned? Hell no. Why not? Because um, you want all to play in front of you. You don't want people to get beyond you. That's the idea. Yeah. You, know? you want to see things in front of you at all times. If you ever want to know what a central defender doesn't want to be doing, it's running. Like they never, no running from a defence. They, they never want to do it. Just want want to be nice walking pace, everything everything under control. Nice. And so a third man run is um, is essentially how you increase the tempo. Where in in your back line or in your maybe not your midfield, but certainly in your back line, you'll be looking for gaps. Like Martinez is amazing at this. And when the gap comes in, that pass goes off, you'll see um, someone move beyond it. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, we, we're not really doing a lot of third man combinations at the moment at United. Uh, I think it's because we miss Martial, to be honest. But I'm going to stop sharing that and just see if any, any comments are are all right with this yeah if anyone's got any questions please get them in 
Um, Stephen saying a uh, wrong answer. Give give that lad a week's detention. <laughs> Is that how it feels that you're at school? <laughs> <laughs> um, we have to use some lines, as they say, uh, pun on the pun. But yeah, um, it's good. I, I mean, we, we we need to have a lot of understanding here, and I, I'm trying to sort of get understanding because you're explaining the third man run in in such good detail, and then with the graphics as well. I think I'm really trying to focus and get it. So you can, and then do it on the pitch. Do it in theory like this is good, but do it in practice, as Barthes said, seems even harder to get three guys oh. on the same page to do something. Is this, this I, tough? I've told Amonde this story before, but I used to play with a bunch of extremely good players, like for my university eleven, and we did, we did like a two-week pre-season, which was quality, but in the times where we actually had to do football we spent four or five sessions which is a lot trying to do third man runs and they were so difficult like the weight on the ball um the the number nine who we were doing it with a number nine um he had to sort of have the withdrawal the wherewithal um to understand if um the third man was in the right place to play it and the third man also can't get ahead of the nine because it's very similar to a pivot and a fullback. You know that, but like, it's much easier to pass to, uh, behind you than it is to pass in front of you when you've got your back to goal. Like, mm. you know, you, you, you're sort of like playing it around corners. It's, it's all very, very nasty. Um, but yeah, they're, they're really, really difficult. And if you can like smash that around at Woodlands, you'll win the league just off third man runs because they're impossible to defend. Like even at a premiership level, we saw City do this to us repeatedly at the Etihad. Mm-hmm. Like Foden's goal was a third man run. He came on the blind side of Ericsson yeah. and just tapped it in. Like all those movements into the box from City. Like we talk about how oh, I can't wait to see the first cut back goal at United. All those cutbacks at City are people running blind side of their man. Like it's so impressive. I've got a question from Kate Cadet who says this question is, would you ever designate a player making these third man runs or do players rotate? I guess it's like, a, is it decided beforehand? Is there certain... Well... What would your answer be for that? I would suspect, right? So I don't know, Cake, but I would... Like, when I did it, there was a dedicated... There was a dedicated person doing it. It was a set piece. I would suspect that at Premier League level... Um, players uh that they will rehearse this in training and things and you will be looking at delo and shaw in particular to be the third men um coming through like although bizarrely a lot of the time it's casemiro for us which i do not like as a defensive midfielder but um it's although it's a sort of set piece it's also improvised like the players have got it in their locker and Mm. they would they would like when the pass when they see a man occupy a zone right so if they see martial move into a particular zone delo or ericsson or casimir or whoever it is should know that it's time to get on the blind side Mm. and then when that ball goes through they then get ahead of their man we should have structural integrity at the back to cover it and if it gets popped off it gets popped off if it doesn't that he might just continue his run um but as always I don't actually know about what happens at Premier League level. And I think next week or the following week, we have um, a coach coming on who might be able to answer these questions um, in more detail, uh, who's quite a well-qualified friend of mine. But that makes sense, though, doesn't it? You'd, you'd expect them to have sort of some set moves that they, they re- rehearse and practice, but also the ability to improvise given you know, if, it's, if things are on. And the well, else got any other... example, Rich, right? Um, this is to you as well, Amonde. Like, Amonde, did you ever play... Well, you wouldn't have, really, but did you, like, did you play... Um, did you do much pressing training? Like, counter-press training? No. Right, counter-press training is really difficult. As I think a lot of you are finding out, I'm an extremely slow learner, and I found a lot of foreign football concepts extremely difficult to get my head around. But when you're doing, like, a counter-press... Um, it's it's like um, uh, it's like a it's like an antivirus. It's always on, 
and you've always got to be thinking about it so you have to sort of be thinking am i nearest the ball and who is my man when you're in possession right and you do that consciously for quite a long time for me it was like half a season and then eventually you get to the point where you're scanning the pitch where it's just being processed on a subconscious level and you know what to do when it comes and i think third man runs for united are a bit like that at the moment where it's a conscious decision delo is like oh no or you know wan is like oh third man run time whereas in a year and a half or whatever is it like driving a car in it you just you don't sometimes i just do not know how i've got home I can't remember <laughs> any aspect of my drive. Yeah. I've just been thinking about Lord of the Rings all the way home. <laughs> um, so yeah, I hope that that works. I hope that's fun for everyone. Yeah, makes sense. It makes a lot of sense. Uh, the more you practice these drills, it, it will become second nature, uh, as Rich was saying. The last time I'm saying, yeah, yeah, I do agree. Um, mm. so practice makes perfect. It does certainly that, especially when you're doing the same drills over and over, repeating these things over and over again um just to ask you a question bath time you were saying when you were um training and you struggled you passed into the number nine uh, when yeah. you were doing the, the third man run um did you do this in theory as well was it all done on the practice field did you have a blackboard or did you and take yeah we had, a we, we had a tactics okay. board so what we used to do is right. we used to go in before training yeah. um it was i don't know why the fuck we did this but they wanted us like on pre-season in our like in our sort of like our suit like so we used to get a suit for travel away which was really nice i often get in it just to make sure i can still fit <laughs> on days where i'm feeling a bit low um and uh we we used to sort of have to sit in there and then explain what we were going to do today and things like that and then they give us feedback individually sometimes on what we did and then flip-flops into the changing rooms go out on the pitch and it, it sounds really pretentious because we're a bloody f university football team but i absolutely loved it it was it was great it was like cosplaying as a footballer um but yeah because did you did you get stuff explained to you on the tactics board or we did have a board yeah and we'd go out but uh, to be honest i think i'm i prefer the practical side of things sitting there and watching a board it's it, maybe when i was younger i just didn't, couldn't comprehend what was going on if you show me on the pitch and keep doing drills over and over again and knowing i'll be tired and i want to get it right this time or you know or yeah. you get shouted at if you don't get it right you've got more pressure to do, to do it but yeah I, I think now at my age i'm not fit or anything but i would take it in like doing these sessions these shows i'm more observant i'm more oh i get it it sort of more clicks a lot better than when you're young and youthful and you can just run for days and just go out there and just do it on, on the training ground. So yeah, I think the combination of the two should work. But the young people, I don't know where they I don't know how intelligent footballers are. Some are on the pitch, but if you ask them to explain it, they might not be able to explain. I think it you look. I think well. you look at someone like Jack Grealish, who I actually think has been playing quite well for City. When I, when and I, I, you know, I'm loath to admit, but I always watch City if they're on television because I think that they're, they're just incredible mm. at what they do and Grealish only seems to have really understood the system like since like Christmas to be honest and and his managers have been like you know um Keane Steven Gerrard I don't know he's he hasn't had like the most progressive managers but what used to help us a lot is uh, is demos in training where like they would show us the d drill twice and then we would go out and do it. So we had the sort of yeah. what we were trying to accomplish and then how we'd accomplish it. And then we'd look like absolute dickheads for half an hour, getting it completely wrong every, all the time. But that's why you train. Mm. But right, anyway, does, has anyone else got any questions about me and Amondo? I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. As far as I can see, I think um, you know, Kate said that yeah, the, um, your answer was, was good. Um, I think Travis has a question saying point of emphasis on Dutch total football. So the football starts at four v four. I am so, so pleased or... that you have answered that you've asked this, Travis, because this is the next topic. I I know very little about Dutch football, and I don't really want to know a lot about Dutch football, <laughs> but. Like Pep Guardiola is currently where most tactical ideas come from. 
in modern football and pep's like sort of like his philosophy is based on uh Cruyff. not Jordi, um but the other <laughs> one <laughs> and um, <laughs> the but the bad one um so yeah. i don't i don't do really know true? what happens Sorry? Do you think it's true what they say them with like players that go to Man City, like Grealish? It takes them a while to to get the system, because that, that's yes. what people say. You judge them. I don't know how long you'd say whether it's like nine months later or half a year later, or it depends on the like you said for Grealish maybe more recently. Well, I mean, I think uh, Thierry Henry. I believe it took him like six or seven months before he was an Arsenal first team regular because he had to learn Wenger's system. Like I think a guy called Davos Suko was starting ahead of him um, for a while, but oh sorry I didn't know I was online. There. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. So I've I've got a picture and I've divided it into. I mean this isn't how you would really divide a picture, up, but as always we've got the interior here. We got the centre. We got the interior. We've got wide half spaces yeah everyone's everyone's familiar with all the areas on a pitch now yeah <laughs> yeah all right so this is man united's sort of build up shape right we have fred or whoever um moving across to um create triangles and we have a a left back or a right back coming into the interior here but the key is, is that we have a left footer here, we have a right footer here, we have Casemiro, our central pivot, we've got players occupying the um, the back four centrally, and we're hoping that this guy here can move around, that players can move around, we can make gaps and we get it up the pitch. We've been through this loads of times, right? Is everyone happy that that is essentially what you see when United play? Yep. Yep. Amande, I need three yeses. It's like yes. Britain's got yes. talent. All right. <laughs> I don't like this. I've, um, I've, I think everyone knows that I'm, I've been against the three-one-six formation for quite a long time. And I'm going to show you a new formation today and explain how it works and why I think United have to move to playing um, a box midfield. Right? Yeah, and, I'm just laughing at George. Sorry. Is, is George saying? Um, what's George saying? Share with saying um, why don't we have the number one player shirt glued to his line, please? <laughs> Good one. <laughs> I have him glued to his post. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, I am going to have to move this guy later. All right. Uh, so I've lost my trail. Uh, okay, I'll show you the box midfield. All right. So a box midfield comprises, first of all, of a rest defence. Right, so it's a 3-2 rest defence here. You then will have players like this in wide areas. So straight away, you can see that there is a box here. Hence, it's called a box midfield. Have we seen Man United do this this season? No, I don't think so. I don't think so either, G Wolf. Trying to think. No. Right. I looked a right tit on Twitter the other day because I looked at our lineup against Southampton of Sancho, Casemiro, Bruno, and Vaghorst. I remember and this. I thought we were going to play a box midfield because in these positions here, these guys here in the box, you want your most technically secure players, right? That means players that don't lose the ball. And for example, you're going to have to trust me on this, um, but against Betis, um, I saw uh, someone say that whenever we lost possession against Betis, how long do you think it took us to get the ball back on average? Nine seconds. Nine seconds, a Monday? I don't know. I've got no idea. Rich? I've absolutely no idea. I've, I don't think I've heard anything about it. Three minutes. What? Three minutes? Three that minutes. That sounds ridiculous, Every doesn't it? Three minutes, what, on an average? 
on average, it was three minutes in the first wow. half. Every time we lost possession, it took us three minutes to get it back because Betis were playing a box and they were technically secure players. Mm. So do you remember like Carvalho doing skill tricks and things? Yeah. Like we, we couldn't get the ball off them. And the reason we couldn't get the ball off them is that if I put the other players, um, if I put the uh, like a team in here, um, you can instantly see there are some problems for yeah. the opposition team. Amonde, what are you seeing? Well, I think you're outnumbering them. If you've got a box in the central areas, you're definitely outnumbering them. And then yeah. someone's got to be drawn out of position. Uh, in the yes. blues, say that blues, for example. Right, uh, the ball's here, the Amonde. Ball, yeah. We would expect our 11 to come out here to help mm -hmm. uh, with the block. What what has the block got to do? What now? Yeah. Now what the have the, got to pull? Yeah. What have 7, 8, 10, 6 got to do? they got to come over. That, yeah, this way. Like that? Or do you want... This? No, no. Uh, who's got the ball? Man United would have reds have, yeah? Red, number yeah. two. Yeah. All right, so 11 goes to close down. Yep. I think uh, the box midfield now is, I mean, you're controlling the centre. You've got, like, two guys there, irrelevant. And you've got two, you've got a seven and a ten there, uh, close to the forwards. And in the half, well, in, the, in between the lines, with two outnumbering the guy. You've got the two, six and eight options, out, basically outnumbering there. There's a triangle there they can play. With mm -hmm. each other, I just think in the central areas there with these box thing, you're completely outnumbering them. Yes, and if um, uh, if so, sorry, let me, let me just say so. If you so, if two's got the ball, two's eleven the ball. comes comes over. Eleven comes over. Down. Nine would be then, there. Yeah, and then suddenly you got up, so they've been dragged out of position. Suddenly the ten and the seven can yeah, like you say can pull over and create a, a passing angle for them to, to get in. And then there's no one to pick up. I mean, you're outnumbered completely. It's it's extraordinary, isn't it? It's, it's crazy such, when you look at it like that, yeah. When, when it's you see such that. an incredible formation because what you would what you'd expect to happen, right, is you would expect something like this to occur where, uh, yeah, I think something, something like that and a couple of weeks ago, I talked about how to checkmate a team. And what what you would expect, right, is you would, th if you think of the Frankie de Jong player that we're looking for, you would expect something like him to be able to drop back here and that five to get up. And you can see that there's a triangle here for a third man run. And you've got one of your best passers in this situation. And if I move to Haya, I'm sorry, George, I know this is incredibly <laughs> unrealistic. If you have a passing goalkeeper, if if this block is good and you can't get through, you've got men over, over here, and then the ball goes out and the block has to move. And you can also, this is the, this is the thing I really liked about playing in a box midfield. Um, let's get everyone back to where they are. Is that because, right, it's a three. I just I'll make it a little bit unrealistic. So you can see it's a four versus three. It means that any one of these four players can move out of possession, can move out of their area to help, and you still have um, match numbers. Yeah, yeah. It's mm. it's really 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 cool. Now just do do me a favor, Bart. Yeah. Man. Just yeah, for. Yeah. For our, our purposes, we're all Man United fans, or we know all know Man United team. Tell me, because the seven and the ten are unusual positions, really. It's usually Bruno's is there. If you were to like fulfill your, your dream and have them play in that role, can you just name the players for us by number, roughly? Uh, what you want the player? The player. Look, so people can identify who's who's the number ten in that position. Is that the wide man cutting in? Is that you know? So people know. Yeah. Okay. So. Can. Um, in this, number 10, I'll make this a bit easier. Uh, in, the, in this formation, six is Casemiro. Eight would be ideally Ericsson, but for now it would be Bruno Fernandes, which we've seen recently. Nine would be Vekhorst, and seven would be Sancho. 
And then Anthony out wide with uh, left Anthony back. Anthony out wide and Shaw. Right. Okay. That makes, yeah. Okay. And so the you, other thing. Sorry, you said um, the guys in the box need to be technically the best players. So, the te um, no, technically most secure. So, and with the ball, this is our, re retain the ball. Th mm. This is our problem, Amondo, because right. I know everyone's. I know Cake and George are here. Shout out to the lads. Veghorst, he might be slow, he might not be able to score, but I think you'd agree he's technically secure. If you give him the ball, Veghorst looks after it. Yep. Yeah, I certainly that... agree with that. Yeah. Sancho um, is one of our better sort of like ball players. He doesn't lose the ball as often as any of the other wingers. Agreed. Uh, Casemiro, I'm afraid, is not technically secure. He should be, but he isn't, um, because he does too. He just does too much on the ball. Like Bruno, he was against Betis. He didn't give the ball away very much, but then he was. It's back to Bruno. Like the man plays like it's the last minute of a World Cup final, <laughs> wherever. And th this is a great problem that I have with Manchester United is that I think the only players this season that I would say have been technically technically secure all season have been Shaw and Martinez. Those those are the only ones who consistently don't lose the ball in tight areas. Does it, yeah. does anyone disagree? I'll throw Sancho. Or is there I another Sancho one? Can, I think Sancho in tight areas can handle the ball really well. He doesn't. He hasn't doesn't played though, has he, Amanda? Okay, really? yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Like from from the first team. And this, this is a problem that we've got going forwards because I'm going to... All right, do you want to talk about Liverpool or do you want to talk about Arsenal? Who's familiar? Um, let's talk uh, Arsenal. Please. Arsenal. Sorry, I, I, it's not just my vote. Do <laughs> you agree, guys? Yeah, no. Arsenal Actually, for me. sorry. <laughs> Actually, I just, I'm just going to pause for a second um, if there are any questions because I have a question for chat um, as well. But is there anything... Is there anything going yeah, on? Give you a bit of time. If anyone's got any questions, Russ was asking George who was number ten. I think it's Rashford, isn't it? Rash, the last man, the furthest striker was Rashford. Yeah, I put I, I put yeah. Rashford in in that case. Is that like George has normally got some good stuff, and Box will find. I'll give you an opportunity, <laughs> Box, to work Michael Carrick into a conversation in a minute. He did say something about where's Carrick playing in this formation earlier on. Did he? Yeah. Well, don't worry. I'm going to talk about Carrick in a minute. But what? I, what? Right. So in the past, we said this on the uh, the eye test a lot. I absolutely hate people who talk about formations. It drives me fucking mental when I hear they play in a four three one two or they they play three at the back or all this kind of stuff. No one really no one really plays um, in formations anymore. It's like football's becoming really homogenized in that all the top teams attack in the same way. And both City and Arsenal use a box that we're, we're going to talk about in a second. I think somebody actually asked that question early on. So is this how City set up when you started putting the, the box formation out? Yeah. And, um, and, we, and Liverpool do not use a box formation. They use a similar formation. I've got one question for us. you. Yeah. If you, what's the, any drawbacks of a box formation? Because you talked about the positives. Any drawbacks, like reasons why people would not use a box formation? Um, it about it's about personnel, like the two teams that are highest in the league, like City City use a box formation, but it is um, it's not perfect, and it's something that they've moved to this season. But um, they 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 use it in their build up, and then they transition to a sort of two up front with Haaland and De Bruyne, um, and well two up front, two two out wide. Um, okay. Uh, so there's a few Arsenal fans in. So if we mention Arsenal, there's a few Arsenal fans in the comments tonight. Is it like <laughs> Batman, where like a light shines out? Like, <laughs> I think so. I think someone's in got... the sky, <laughs> and, and they they come um, through. But yeah, we are going to talk about. We're going to talk about Arsenal, and in particular, um, we're going to talk about Zinchenko. Okay. I right. don't think I know this box. You'd have to ask Andrew that. Um, so whilst like whilst we sort of talk about like how Arsenal do their box, um, 
I want you to, like in chat and with my fellow panellists, I want you to think about fullbacks in the Premier League that can invert into midfield. We've all heard it loads, but I want uh, see if you can come up with five. Okay, now let's let's talk about Arsenal. Alright, am I am I on screen, Rich? On screen, yep. Alright, I'm just gonna move these horrible blue things off the show. So <laughs> with with Arsenal, you would like if you look on the telly, they'll set up like this. Um Right, they play four three three. Okay. What's really interesting, right, is that the Arsenal back four is with your number three Zinchenko, and then you have Gabriel, Saliba, and either, is it Tommy Asu and White? Yeah? At right back? Yeah. Yeah. All right. What actually happens with Arsenal is that they do what everyone does, whoops, and they go to a back three, where you ha you'll have White or Tommy Asu in this area here, um, and you'll have Saliba and uh, Gabriel here. And then Zinchenko inverts alongside, what's his name? Partey, the criminal. <laughs> um, you get Chaka, I'll put him as a hey, going this part of the box. You get Odegaard, that part of the box. And then you have your width in Martinelli and Saka. And if this will be more recognisable, if you move everyone over... This is what Arsenal love to do. They compact the pitch like this, and they have um, and they have their spare man and all their triangles. But the the key to this is is this man here, Zinchenko, the number three. Um, this is what has allowed Arsenal to take a huge step up because it means that they can attack in this shape, which you'll all, which is like look. They get all nice and compact. Where's my pen? They get all nice and compact. They have Jesus wandering into space. Um, and then you'll get like Odegaard or someone running behind. And then they've got that outlet ball in either Saka or Martinelli. And um, the, these players here, Zinchenko, Partey, Odegaard and Chaka, are all technically secure. So that this box midfield is... I mean, it's basically a rondo, if any of you have ever done that. It means that with with the right touch and the right technique, they can recycle this ball, draw people in, and then hit the switch out here, and then Saka can either get to the byline or cut inside and shoot. And the entire basis of Arsenal's success is that they have the Zinchenko going in doing that because Zinchenko can then get in to a block where you will see you won't see it very often but you'll see Arsenal get into a traditional 4-1-4-1 block which is able to tran we'll do this next week which is then able to transition into a press when the ball goes backwards it's uh, they're absolutely unreal at it Arsenal um, I'm just going to stop it there Rich to find out if Luca's response to this is just Arteta. I think Luca, I don't know if he's responded or is around it still. It'd be interesting to know what Arsenal fans think because obviously they watch the team a lot. Do you think it's um, gradually Arteta's been building up this team in terms of getting players that can play this, like said technical on the ball and you can see that there's some transfers maybe to fans didn't make sense but obviously he knew what he was trying to achieve and maybe Zinchenko maybe City dropped the ball a bit with letting him have that player. I think it's a case, right? By the way, Monday, you're muted if you don't know. Um, I think it's uh, a case of um, City have a player who I think is absolutely stunning. I can't believe what I'm seeing when I watch him play, which is Rico Lewis, who is like 18 or 19, and he is positionally absolutely fantastic in three or four different places over the pitch. Pivot, left back, centre back like um in half spaces in wide areas i've never seen anything like it from a from essentially a child and that guy is going to eclipse zinchenko like he's going to be a much much better player so i think it's fine to ship out 
Zinchenko or Cancelo, but not to Arsenal. Like, mm-hmm. like um, Pep. If you ask Pep what the biggest mistake he's made like this season, I think it's Zinchenko because he's allowing Arsenal to build up in in that shape using a box which is Inchenko in the box and defend that way but uh Lewis Stones Rico Lewis yes Stones don't think so Zinchenko yes Gross I don't know your nan 100% um, <laughs> uh, I, I actually I could only come up with like uh, the only one I could come up that isn't there is Malassia at United, Malassia is able to invert into the midfield, and this is the next thing: is apart from Malassia, we don't have a fullback who who can invert properly. Like, do, does anyone think that Dallow can can really do it? I had such high hopes no. for him. I think he can. I think he can. He's got the technical ability. He just needs to learn it. I think um, the names here, yeah. Just, I just made me, got me thinking. I remember Duncan Edwards, he, or back in the fifties and sixties, there were positions called half back. <laughs> That's true, and they no, were. I'm laughing at box. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> they were they were filling in these sort of spaces. They were sort of filling these areas, and I think um, I think it's ideal if if you explain because they had a left back, the Scottish guy, um, Arsenal. What's his name again? Tierney. Kieran Trippier. He's. Like fantastic scene going forward, bombing down, overlapping, getting to the final third, crossing the ball. And you think, wow, he's one of the best left backs in the country. Uh, you know, this is what most people would say. Is this Tierney Suddenly, or Trippier? Sorry? Is this Tierney or Trippier? Tierney, sorry, excuse Tierney. me. Yeah. Okay, good. Did I say Tierney and Trippier? Uh, you did. I, yeah, forgive me. <laughs> so, I mean, Tri- Tierney, T- Kieran Tierney. Kevin. Yeah. Kieran Tierney. Kieran Tierney. He just bombs down, and he's not mm. able to do that job. I know he's in, been injury prone, but Arsenal fans love him. I love him as well for what he does. He's effective bombing down there. Really does a good job. But to see Shashenko come in, and what you explain, I thought you explained that really well by time about Arsenal. It's good when you can use names that we can see every week yeah. on TV to say, oh, right, you know, it makes a lot more sense. But Shashenko, or I'm butchering his name, Shashenko, the Ukrainian guy, coming in field, his touch is good. I've seen him pop it around the corner the other day. And I'm like, what? You know, you got mm. that in your locker. But he has to have all those sort of um, abilities to, to play that role, I imagine. And he's got IQ as well. So people might say, oh, he's defending. He might not be good. He can get moved up. You can attack him uh, as a defender. He's not a good defender. But how often are they in that situation where he's having to get one-on-one with a fast winger like a star or something? It's rare. And if he even if he does, he's got the he's not the paciest, he's not the um strongest, but he's still you hardly ever see him get caught out, beat because of yeah. the system that, that's working. And like you said, we the first game at Old Trafford, that was we covered that, didn't we, on the show? Mm-hmm. And that, that was really interesting. Because you you mentioned there, I'm watching, okay, yeah, you're right. They shift over to one side and we actually exploit that by it used the space that was um left over because um Rich was asking earlier, what is the downfall of the box? And I think that game uh, against Man United at Old Trafford, the 3-1, we sort of exploited them a little bit. Um, when to be only... clear, though, the box is in possession. Like, yeah. out of possession. Yeah. But, that, yeah, that, into... but that's what I'm saying. That, that was the downfall. If you lose possession, suddenly you've got to transition back into uh, a good shape. And well, I think you go when straight we... into the counter-press because of the box. You've got you've got so many people close around that you just you whiz about and you try and win it back. It's like it's mm. something that we've got to be doing. And I, I I'll tell you another thing, right? When we talk about fullbacks, Tierney, Trippier, um, they're both very similar. They're not as good, but they're both very similar to Robertson and Trent Alexander-Arnold. Liverpool are having an absolute nightmare this season. Because lots of teams in the Premier League are using the box and they have three in their midfield and their fullbacks providing the width and it is causing them huge problems because mm. they're too open. This is the big this and all right, they did us the other day. We we were too open as well. We basically tried to match them. But Liverpool's problems come from that. Chelsea as well. They don't have enough technical players in that back three that they use. 
which is why they try to use um, Kukurea sometimes. But they don't have enough technical players to build up properly. And they don't have anyone that can invert. But th they're kind of trying to do it at Kukurea. But honestly, United, there's... Like I'll sh I'm going to go and show you some, some more graphs and things in a second about the box midfield. But I know the the one argument I have a lot of people don't like Bruno Fernandes and some of them are Man United fans Bruno can't play in a box from what we've seen so far because he loses the ball too much Casemiro can't play in a box because he loses the ball too much Fred absolutely can't play in a box <laughs> even though he can't, even though he sort of has been in that position he's too technically erratic to to play in a box and i'll shock you all i don't think mctominay can play in a box either it's a bit like, sad no i don't think no. from what i've seen because when you think about the box players right this isn't derogatory to anyone but i call them goblins right big asses short little legs bernardo silva gundogan um odegaard like uh, the king of them hazard like we you need players that are able to sort of turn and combine and twist uh in order to sort of like keep the ball in the box what we have is we have a team of players that are far too direct and when you're too direct like liverpool are at the moment you you can't control games of football and you look at arsenal you look at um uh, man city they control games they're the only team in the league uh, apart from possibly brighton who i haven't seen that control games and man united have got to move towards the box midfield do you think it's like how realistic is it given the squad at the moment do you think it's going to be like arsenal we're going to see this happen over several transfer windows where we bring in more technical players that can play in this and gradually move people out because like you said you, you've listed most of our players in the field that can't do this so do you think it's going to be a long process? These players are absolute gold dust to find that are able to do this. Like, we can't really mention many left or right backs that can invert effectively in the Premier League. Like, there's Rico Lewis, there's, um, uh, there's Zinchenko, and Cancelo's gone. I don't really think... Malassia can do it, but not that effectively. Sure, he can't... He... he he, d he doesn't do it particularly well. Shaw's been great this season, but he's not been great when he's gone into sort of midfield areas. We can't find them. When you look at Frankie de Jong, um, Frankie de Jong, I'm going to show... Actually, I'll tell you what, I'll show it to you now and I'll talk you, talk you through this um, as we do it. So, yeah. where's one with JL's question as well. Do you think this is the route that Ten Hag wants to go down? Absolutely, I do, but I uh, but it's he doesn't have the personnel to do it at the moment. Uh, right. So, okay, that's a decent enough approximation of a box midfield. Yeah. Can I just ask you a quick question? Yeah, yeah. A, a couple players, of names so. that always come up on this message here: Rice, Bellingham. Would they suit this system? One would, one wouldn't. Guess who I'm going to say would, and guess uh, who I'm going to say would. Rice. Absolutely, Declan Rice. Uh, why do you think? Matty. Why do you think? Um, why do you think that Arteta's looking at Rice? He can play in a box because he's got such a weird body, Declan Rice. He's got <laughs> he's got tiny little legs. Um, he's very good in small areas. He can carry the ball. He, there's nothing Declan Rice isn't good at, and he can play in a box. Jude Bellingham, from what I've seen of him, I, I don't think so. Like, I, to be honest, I've probably seen his worst performances. And I think that, uh, I personally think that German football is, is pretty agricultural and extremely basic. Like the box midfield, you used to play this in Spain. Um, the box midfield was the sort of like Spanish and Latin American answer to the 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 ridiculous pressing tactics that were coming out of Germany. 
So the Germans, like, do you remember Ragnick said, um, oh, when we see the other team with the ball, we should think, yippee, they've got the ball. How do we get it back? Like, just this sort of horrible defensive attitude of we've got to go and get the ball. And in Spain, they came out with a box midfield, to my understanding, as how to deal with the press by having all your technically competent players outnumbering about Mount? Um, the counter press. Question from box. Mount, box man? Yes. Mount is, this is why I think a lot of clubs that you... He has uh, been linked to us, hasn't he? Yes. Recently. He has, yeah. Mason Mount's been linked to a lot of clubs that want to move to the box because Mason Mount can play this, um, this sort of 10 or this 8 up here without any problems he's good in tight spaces he just isn't really particularly sexy like to english people good presser good on the ball but th this is why i think there'll be huge interest in mountain rice from clubs that people on twitter wouldn't expect because uh, you know they're twitter people they don't really understand stuff but when we um when we look at the box midfield right um Whoops. You have a two... Sorry, you have a three versus two here. You have a three versus two here. You've got a triangle here. You've got a triangle here. Do you see how many like bloody triangles there are? Yeah. Just drawing lines between all of these players. And you can see that you have three versus two everywhere Barcelona right? play this way when Pep yes. was there but, so uh, I was going to say when, when you were drawing no. triangles like that it was, make, it was giving me horrible flashbacks to the Champions League finals where we couldn't get the ball mm. where they, they seemed to have a ridiculous amount of passing options um, they didn't they didn't then What I think right this is just off the top of my head um, I think that they played with um, the, like with Busquets Chavi and Iniesta and then Messi was coming around making the triangles but they had they had Messi and um, I know we're all you know big Ronaldo fans but Messi like is light yeah, years yeah, ahead of Ronaldo good, until you get to the box like it's the difference between them but even if you were to so this is this is what I want to talk about Frankie Dion if you go to a three-man press right you can instantly see there's a bit of a problem uh, against a box because let's let's say you're just to make it easier. Let's say you're man marking. One of the box is always free, mm. right? And what what happens is is that this ten will normally try and get themselves marked by this ten, and the six will come back to relieve the pressure. And this six is Frankie de Jong. This is, this is what Ten Hag wants from Frankie de Jong. He wants a player. And I want, want you lads and lads in chat and ladies and all the things in between um, to give me a player who um, can play a high volume of short passes quickly, who is able to come back and who can work in between the lines while being disciplined. And I will tell you, I'll give you one name that you've all laughed at me about for years, and you can Mr. have Mr. McTominay. No, nope. not McTominay. Box will get it. Um, but that. So, to go back to your original question about like, we don't have the players to play this formation. He wants to. I think because of the signing of Frankie De Jong, he absolutely wants to. So, G Wolf, can you think of in the Premier League or? I'll tell you what, I'll expand it to the last 10 years of the Premier League. Can you name me a player that is able to do that number six role? Number six role? The, the one that I've just Ooh. done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So... I know who you're going, where this is going. Yeah. I'm don't on know. I'm trying to think. Well, I, I know where it's going as well, but I, I'm going to throw in an extra, another guy, Dembele, who's played for Spurs. I thought he was... Musa Dembele. Cool. Yeah. I will absolutely give you Musa Dem Dembele. Um, that, that was a player Fire? that could absolutely play this. Not at all. Not not in this role. Like, not in this, not in this role. Um, 
uh, George. I was going to call you Kyle then. No, Hoiberg, no. They, they need I think to I called able... him Kyle once. I don't know yeah. why. Um, it's because his name is George Kyle. I don't even know if that's George's real name. Like, my real name isn't Bath Time. I'm going to spo- <laughs> spoil that. Um, are you, are you sure? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It's I'm Latin, so it's tiempo de baño. Um, but... <laughs> Um, but these players that you're mentioning can all play um, the La Salida Volpiano style of football, where they come in like Busquets to sort of make that um, make that third man. But what you need here is you need um, a player that can like play combinations. Box. Uh, it is Harry Winks. Harry Winks. This is why I've always loved Harry Winks because he can play this role. And you might you you can keep naming me players. But you can't name me like a, a player better than Winks at this role, and this is why he's getting such rave reviews in Italy because he is playing this role. I genuinely wouldn't be surprised if we got linked to him on a free transfer or a loan or something. Um, Ericsson is the nearest player in the squad that we have to this, and what about didn't... Kante? Kante, yeah, I, um, I think, I think. Um, like late later Kante, yeah. Like when he first came to England, he was simply a sort of destroyer. Um, yeah, Dembele was incredible box, but you'll get those players there. And this is also, by the way, the basis of my theory that Pogba could play at right back was because I felt that he had the physical attributes to to defend at right back and defend the back post, but could then invert into the midfield. Uh, Pedro and Gavi don't play that role for Barcelona. De Jong plays that role. Um, but yeah, I would think that both of them could be able to play it, but De Jong is better at it than them, I would imagine, just off the evidence. Modric? Yes, 100% yes. Modric could absolutely play that role. Um, and I think he might actually do for um, Real Madrid. I don't see it. Huge deal. But do you see the level of player that we're talking about and how yeah. rare they are? Like, when we look to the players that we're going to be linked to, like, Harry Kane would be a fantastic signing for United because, uh, in the same way that Jesus can move into pockets of space and link play, Harry Kane can obviously do that. And he also yeah. brings you a much better cutting edge than Gabriel Jesus up front. Like, sorry, Luca, but, you know. It's true. It's just, it's just true. But what we really want to be on the lookout for is a De Jong, Winks, Dembele type of midfielder. I, I don't know enough about him to comment, but yes, George Camavinga could be. He, he, he could be. Um, but he's, uh, but he doesn't do it for Real Madrid. Um, so Modric does it. So we need the player of Modric's caliber. I don't, not for me, not, not for me. Um, but yeah, like so. I'm just going to check my notes. I'm very disappointed about the lack of soup chat tonight. I oh, know there was some earlier. Oh, thank God. They're, uh-huh. they're having it early. Oh, very nice. But um, <laughs> I, I don't know, oh, Jr. Yeah. Like the bridge is thick as well. Uh, you know what? I'm I'm down with this, bruv. Um, everything you said so far, I can't argue with at all about um, seeing what Arsenal makes them successful. Um, the players required, uh, why we looked after, we were looking at Frankie De Jong, the fullback situation. I did recall when we were buying Malatia, watching him for final. We just got to see games late in the um, whatever cup they were in, Euro- European mm-hmm. Cup last season. And seeing him playing in the inverted role. I don't think he's that talented when he gets the ball, but he's does enough to keep it and so he's just coming like a duck to water playing that role and you'd see him there a lot of the time so i think it's, once again brilliant um the way you've outlined um how to play this this system this box and the pros and cons for it not many cons by the way but more pros um big up man i love this yeah like um i box i, I don't know I, all I know about McAllister is he was all right in the World Cup and he's got a funny laugh and he's ginger. <laughs> like, I, don't, uh, I, 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 think he, I think he would. I think he would do well in that um, 
in that position that you're saying? Well, the one that was, G Wolf, right, I've got a problem with United as well, which is completely racially biased. But I think that we're getting too many emotional Latin Americans into our team. Like, we, I think we need cooler heads in, in our team at the moment. You see Bruno losing it each week. You see Casemiro crying. Martinez, it's absolutely great, but he's so passionate and stuff. I, I would like a sort of more Dennis Berg camps and like Robocops and things. Literally no emotion. Get the autism back. Get the autism out of chat and into our midfield. That's what I, that's, that's what I want to see. Um, but Monday, like, uh, I haven't really got my, anything else on a box midfield, but can you think of like any players that are realistic that we could be looking at to, to move There's a guy I've this? always liked for, called Tonelli from AC Milan. He's really yeah. good. He plays deep. Just to add, like this, is what I was thinking because um, while you're talking, I was thinking about this. Um, like to play that role, obviously you've got to be technically. What do you call it? Technically secure. Technically secure. Technically That's secure. the new buzzword. Yeah. So ball retention, you've got to be able to keep the ball mm. and, and in tight areas like that, and not give it away. Especially you're playing deep as well. That's why Fred always gets pinched and in those sort of areas. But I think these guys that have these attributes, they usually play in the final third. Because they're that talented, they can probably do that. Yeah. Like someone like Frankie De Jong, you put him in the final third, he could easily do his thing, you know, quite easily. So I think it's great. What I love about these guys to have all those technical abilities to be able to play a, um, a technically secure position. What's the word? The technically technically secure. Yeah, technically secure or reserved, where you can give the joy to other people. But it's only coaches and real football heads that can appreciate you in a team. So you talk about Harry Winks for a long time and you were the laughing stock, to be honest. Yeah. But now you've had the last laugh because outlining the box midfield and what it takes, the attributes it takes, we are all struggling to find a player that ticks all the boxes. So I think a, a old school number 10s, like Prelo for Pilo, for example, he played when he first came out, he was a number 10. Yeah. So suddenly he's reverted back because he's unselfish. He's got the right mentals to play deeper not take the glory, but he could play, pin the ball about and dictate a size play. I read an article today when he's 32, um, AC Milan didn't want to renew his contract. They thought he's finished and he's gone to Juve and played another mm. four years, three years in a row. He was player of the year in, in Italy and he won the World Cup and Champions League and all that kind of thing for Juve when they thought he was over. So these technical abilities, it's very rare you get players so talented like that, but usually they're higher up the pitch. So I respect these guys at Frank de Jong and Ting who can sit back and be a joy and appreciation from get appreciated from his coaches for filling for filling that role. Well, where's role. Where's Silva been playing recently for Man City? Yeah, when we when we played them, didn't we? He was dropping. He was the one. Harlem was dropping deep. And he was coming back, back, back to get the ball, like you were saying. Uh, Bernardo yeah, that, that was Silva playing the De Jong role in those yeah. games because yeah. we we were trying to man mark. Um, who was it? De Bruyne. De Bruyne, and so they sort of moved into. Uh, into that sort of shape, and I've I've noticed. I don't want to front run any of the questions. I've noticed that like um, George and Box are given loads of Italian bass players. I I have absolutely no idea who any of them are. Like, Tonelli. I know. I know Tonelli. Yeah. Tonelli. Sorry. Yeah. I Tonelli. I don't know how you pronounce it, but um, he uh, I, I, he he's a, a good Without player. Pressure. But yeah, but is he is he just like a deluxe Ruben Neves? No, I think he's got more to his game. I think he can play right. as a number 10. He's so good on the ball and head up and pop, pop you know, real, at a young age, he's already got those, um, that, that ability. And I think, yeah, I really, I really do like him a lot. Well, let's go but, out and get him then. We're loaded. But they might say he's not physical enough or he can't run or anything. But when you talk about systems, as the famous quote from Bath Time, systems win games, not players. When you talk about systems, it, it, it works. And uh, it could work. And like you're saying about Shishenko, he might not be the best left back defending wise, but you never get the chance to exploit him because he's playing in a great system. I was going to say, we might already have one, but Who? we just haven't used him in that position. Martinez. Well, G Wolf, I th you have come to a point that has bothered me for quite a long time, which is. I have never been completely sure what Arteta 
was going to be doing with Mar- with Martinez, who he wanted badly. Like he went in hard to get him, and I I think you're right. I think he might have played him at left back and inverted him in the midfield because Martinez is technically immense. Like we saw him getting out of trouble against the press the other day. There were three men on him, not a problem. Mm-hmm. I have seen in the same game Bruno nearly got snapped up. I've seen Pogba, McTominay, Fred, Eriksson. I've seen them all get done in that situation. I haven't yeah. seen anyone get out of it the way Martinez did. And I think I think you might be right. I, I would say that of the players in our team, the only ones that are getting near the Arsenal lineup or the City lineup are Shaw and Martinez. Like Rashford scores a lot of goals and stuff, but he gives the ball away, he makes too many poor decisions. Like um he's like they they'll be they they would take him. But they would definitely have to coach a lot of stuff out of him and change the way he plays, mm. um, and and stuff like that. So, I I agree with you. I think I think Martinez. There must have been a backup plan for him at United. He is five foot whatever, and th- there would have been a worry about what if he just gets bullied each week, and th- he it would have been well we're going to play him at left back or we're going to play him at defensive midfield. Like, there mm. had to have been a contingency plan because you can all laugh at Carragher and Souness, but they're, they're right. You Five foot nine centre backs don't do well in the Premier League, and Martinez might not next season. Like, you, might not, like, but I think not. he will. I think, I, I, he, does. I think um, he will. I think he's got enough in his game to, like, you know, I, I, I've seen enough in his game that he's quite short, like, short. We, is it? Uh, is this the right word? Shored up at the centre back area yeah, with um, Duran. But best type forward to play in front of a box midfield. Who? What do you reckon, Amanda? So I repeat that. Jr's question: What's the best type of forward to play in front of a box midfield? What What do you think you should be looking for? Someone who can peel off. Um, could you have possession of the ball? Someone. Who can I think of? Uh, someone, someone who can peel off. Uh, so you've you got the four guys in front of you. So you have two midfielders closer to you. Mm-hmm. So someone you can peel off and bounce the ball off. You know, play a little set uh, into them, and you've got two guys. You know, can link up. It's a bit, a bit, a bit like veg horse. Play someone can play his back to his goal and also spin off and get in behind. So maybe a short guy. Um, Mo, uh, what's his name? Uh, who's the guy? Sergio Cunaguero. Kuna yeah. Guerra, for example, play not saying him directly, but play into his feet. He can give and go that sort of thing because you can have a lot of possession high up the pitch, and someone who can peel off a defender and pop into feet and go, or can spin off and get in behind, or can sort of drag players out of position, uh, defenders out of position, because you've got these two guys in front of you, midfielders very close to the forward line. So yeah, someone who's low centre of gravity, who can spin off and rotate and appeal and drag drag defenders away. Okay. Do you think um, Sun could do that? Fantastic point, George. That's absolutely you're one hundred percent correct. There, that's the first thing that you should be looking for. What did we start the show with, Amondo? I missed that, George. Who did you say can do that? No, someone who's fantastic in defending as a forward. That's the first thing. Oh, that we sorry, want. sorry. Okay, yeah. I'm, that's I'm the looking. First thing that we want. <laughs> I mean, uh, Wolf, G Wolf. Um, I someone... said Sun. Okay. Son, son, yeah, you, you mean son? Do you think oh, that he right, could do right, that right, position? Right. No, he's a wide player. Like, and it's why I don't think that Rashford has a long-term future at number nine. Um, he doesn't have the the strength. But we, what did we start the You're show? You're leading to. Oh, I don't like this because I said in the other show earlier I didn't like Kane. I'm not a big fan of his. But maybe you're leading someone like Harry Kane. I'm looking okay, yeah. for third man combinations, someone who can drop deep and create space, and possibly someone who offers a physical threat in the box. And Harry Kane is all of those things. Ah, yeah, I have to admit I'm... you're right, but I don't like it. I don't that's like right. it. Mm. That's right. That, what do you that... like about it? I just, you know, it's rich. I think you would buy a player. Um, I think we should work on our system. And not have to buy the player that's going to get us close the gap so soon. I think we should get a player, develop a player, and bring them in. Harry Kane's been in the I think that's so what Ten Hag would prefer to do, wouldn't it? Buy someone that's younger that he can 
mould more. But I oh, think right. with Harry Kane, yeah. you, maybe haven't you got fast time. Track but... the process probably. Yeah. What about Ossiman? I uh, know everyone just talks about him because he's playing for good sides and he's. he's you know, <laughs> I don't know enough about him. Um, Napoli, not for me, not for me. Uh, there's a, there's talk yeah. about. Uh, I'll tell you someone. Um, who's the little guy, the Canadian striker? David, Jonathan David, or something? Jonathan David. I'm keep looking at him. I'm still unsure, but he seems to be able to sort of come in and you know peel off and pop it off and all this kind of thing. But yeah, I don't know. It's a tough position, like you were saying on this show. What's made me. Re- the, outstanding thing for me is like there's a select few players in world football who mm. who are vital and you should pay the money for based Pep on sold what... two of them to arsenal yeah <laughs> yeah. Jesus yeah. yeah what and was Jesus. he thinking mm. um but yet like look victor osman i think everyone knows that i hate victor osman because yeah. a lot of um people whose opinions i, I don't respect okay. because they don't respect themselves could always talk about how Victor Osman is the answer, and it's no, it's no one here. It's like I know George and Box are the Carricks of wind up merchants, <laughs> slow, lazy, predictable, but <laughs> <laughs> but um, <laughs> um, but like I haven't seen enough of Osman, but Osman looks to me to be a sort of like a counter attacking striker, yeah, and. I find it like I find it very interesting that Osman is not linked with uh, and hasn't been linked with the teams that play possession positional football because the point of positional football is said at the beginning is to get players in between the lines, right? Love, Does, love. yeah. Half time, you're on fire tonight, man. Honestly, I, I'm agreeing with a lot of things, almost everything you said tonight. Honestly. Demonstrations, all that kind of. Thing. I want to get on the football pitch now and do something. Now, honestly, you've been on fire, on point. I feel like I've taken this a lot of this in. It makes sense to me. Uh, so, enough respect to you, bro. Honestly, to, tonight, especially, I just feel what everything says. Like, are you reading from a script? Are you, you know, <laughs> it's on point. Oh, seriously, on point. Big up. I, this is training for twenty years a Monday. Like what? Like watching the game. Like being out on the pitch getting it done this is where we learn and like you know all of this as well you just don't have the vocabulary for it uh because you haven't read or watched lord of the rings so can you watch that which he promised me he would he would um uh he would love that but it's um sorry i've just seen my name so my yeah um maybe george i see like karen benzema is like quite obviously one of the like elite strikers in the world too don't old like him. now though any don't you think the thing is right is that, so both you and amande have brought this up about kind of buying success or whatever sheringham was he was, was he that old when we got him he was he was pretty old van percy like yeah i think he was 32 probably wasn't he, yeah. Yeah. Came, wasn't 32, he? 32, van 30, wasn't he Things, yeah, but like they, they were, they were fucking hell. Sorry. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, Ship coming. Yeah, it's like <laughs> living in Sunderland again. Man. Yeah. Um, uh, but like, um, the thing is, right, is that we have to, um, we have to, like, Arsenal trust the process was a bit of a meme and stuff, and people were laughing at it. But they had, they had time to get their pieces in order. We're Manchester United. We do not have time to develop players and get and get them to where they are. What we need to do is we, we need to do essentially what City have done is have a ridiculous youth program where you're getting players like Rico Lewis who can play three different positions like at a Champions League level as a teenager. And we also need to get in top quality players because the league is it's it's venomous how competitive it is and how ruthless the scouting is. Like United have been absolutely non-stop targeted in the press um, since that Leeds game. Like, and we're going to be all season. United are going to have to change up how they build up from the back mm. in order to confirm top four, which is perfectly normal. But you'll also have noticed that Martinez is getting got at a lot more in in the last cut in the last month or two we saw Mikel Antonio do him we saw Salah do him 
like and previously we'd only seen uh dan james do him bizarrely shout out rich to dan james um but like uh players like we're also going to see a lot of a lot of people um dangling the ball at casemiro like just just putting it on the edge of their toe and then <laughs> trying to get it back because he he goes to ground too much he's not disciplined enough like it's completely his own fault these red cards i don't want anything you did about say that early on in the same match i think you said you're worried about how how quick how often he's going to ground and then since day one like bruv he came in like um hmm. Yeah, when he came off the bench did. against Southampton, it was like, you know, in like uh, Quentin Tarantino films, like Kill Bill and that, someone comes in doing an action move and there's a freeze frame that says their name. <laughs> that, that's what it was like with Casemiro. He just slid on the pitch like he was in Ren or some West End musical and he just hasn't stopped sliding ever since. Like Tarzan on a vine, he just keeps going. It's, and the thing is, is that he's got, he's got to learn because we can't, we can't be going like how many games is he going to miss this season for his suspension? Is it up to it's up to eight, isn't it? Or seven? No, seven. it's like, four. No, but it's in total, four. it's like seven, isn't it? From oh yeah, it's a thirty-eight game season. Like I know, I think in terms of available for games, it's twenty twenty-five percent of what he could have played. He's going to miss from suspension, which is yeah. Too many. Um, I, I don't know anything about Rodrigo. I'm, a, I'm afraid, George. Like, I'm uh, going to shock you here, but I don't really watch a lot of foreign football. <laughs> I, I, don't I like George's agree. comment. Casemiro, his theme song is Miley Cyrus's "Wrecking Ball." Wrecking Ball. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a good one because he's got the belly for it as well. Um, <laughs> But like I mean, you know, like this. The, what we'll probably see on Thursday, right, is we'll probably see Ten Hag. Like I mean, Ten Hag is like a sort of Victorian uh, factory owner. He works the players into the ground, <laughs> like proper tailorism. And, and I expect I would never play him, but I expect that he'll play Casemiro against Betis. And Casemiro, if he gets a yellow card, is out for the next game. So what we're probably going to get is we're probably going to get McFred against Juventus or something and Paul Pogba. I know, it up. just seems crazy, doesn't it? I just saw everyone posting on Twitter today saying he's not he's going to be suspended for league games so definitely play him against Betis. And I was just thinking, but he's, no. We don't, we're, we're 4-1 up. We don't need to play Casemiro. No, I don't think so. We'll I think... It's going to no, play, I mean, isn't it'd, be, it'd be nice. To, it'd be nice to have an on-pitch leader, but I do, I do worry about that. All the leaders that we have in the team are incredibly emotional. Like, like Ericsson, I think, was a cool head. Like, I mean, the man died and came back to life, so he's going to like have some perspective on things. But like the rest of them, this is why I want Maguire, like playing against Betis. Like, I think. You can all laugh at Maguire and stuff, but Maguire is a technically secure player that can break lines and that has, in my view, a sort of calming influence. Put him and Varane in the centre, get Malasia on, you know, unleash Juan Bissaka in Spain. See, like, he's exactly the sort of player that would terrify them. <laughs> in, like, on several different levels, as Monday knows. But, um,. Yeah, wicked. Have we got any other questions? And if you're watching in later, um, I, I always come and have a look at the comments that yeah, I've Any missed. questions, even after the stream, if you want to put a question on the video after, if you, if you think of something, then definitely, definitely do that because we'll be checking it. See, I don't understand that and... comment from Box. Four red cards, then three red cards, then two for ten yeah. yellows. No, no, it's four, it... four games missing for a red card. Three for the other red card, which was the first red card, and then two he's missed. This is games missed. Oh, wait. So if you because it because he only missed one game, didn't he? Because he only missed the um, the missed He missed three for a straight red, didn't he? Then he, now he's going to miss four. He's already missed games for yellows. Remember that when he got a yellow card, missed the Arsenal game in oh, yeah. the 80th minute. Another bit of Ten Hag management that annoyed me. Yeah. Um, well, we, yeah, me personally, I, like from this show, any football game I'm watching now, you have to watch it with a, in a new, with new eyes. I believe you know. Sometimes I watch a game, eat your popcorn, chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But since 
we be sort of going deep with these show every Monday night, guys. Make sure you tune in. It's like I've got new eyes when I'm watching football and I'm watching yeah. things and trying to get understanding, some comprehension of why they do that, what's happening here, why do this team have so much possession. Uh, we hear a lot of people, this is what drives me crazy, we're saying, oh, why are they playing it sideways? Why are they playing it back? Oh, for God's oh, sake. That's kind of thing. Yeah. But you can see, the, um, when you see these beautiful goals, where it's team goals, boof, boof, start, start again, recycle, boof, 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 start again. And they, they're doing it as a team. It's a beautiful thing to watch. I don't yep. care if you score a worldie from 40 yards or an overhead kick. That doesn't impress me. I think what we're working with Bar Pine <laughs> and you guys, that don't impress me much, you know. Yes, yeah, Shania Ojuma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I love now watching games and just trying to. Like I was watching City play Crystal Palace today, the other mm. day, and even though they were always in control, even though I thought, oh my god, they could get a result here, Crystal Palace, but it just had to come, didn't it? Because of the wearing down, the controlled possession, um, the, the space they were using. We remember uh, G Wolf talking about space the other day. I was, thinking about you the other day and watching this game against Palace. I hate to say it, I am watching other games, you know, but it's interesting. Everything we talk about here, I just transfer to when I'm watching the game and just get a new vision into it. Here's one for you, Amanda. You, I think Harry Kane the same. would have a similar goal tally to Haaland and would have made City better if they had taken him instead. Like, so yeah. next, time, next time you watch well, City... Look well, I, can I just jump in on that? Because I was watching yeah. him the other day against Palace and he was getting munched up by Guaita, um, the centre-back, mm -hmm. and Anderson. They, he couldn't get really get away from him or get space to make moves or run. And I think you're right there because Harry Kane would find pockets of space better than him. Uh, that's maybe where he's better because he's not as part of pacey or powerful or whatever. Um, and not, you know, um, get... get more space and utilise the space a lot better than uh, Haaland did. I thought Haaland was neutralised for the majority of the game. I was thinking, well, how is he being effective here? What's he got to do? Because when she physically greater, is it, his centre-back from Palace? Strong as an ox. Yeah, I know what you mean, yeah. Well, if you try to feel for him, you just feel a brick wall. He's, he looks like he's made of rock, you know? And a couple of times they went and had duels and you got no change out of him. So, yeah, maybe you're right. Harry Kane would, would get um, better joy from C. And, and, and I, I must confess, sorry, last point. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how I can change my mind in a day, but <laughs> on the early, I was saying, no, nah, I don't want Harry Kane. I would think he'd be effective, but you're right with what you say, with his game, how going forward, we could become a better team tenfold, or not tenfold, but a, a, a much better team based on his play. I, I hate to say it, but yeah, I think you're right about that. Right, there's two comments I want to address in chat. Number one is Kate Cadet. Absolutely not. I find City electrifying to watch. But we we see the game differently. Like, if, if you watch a 4-3, you probably think it's amazing. And it physically hurts me to just see how stupid people are playing. And the other one is, you've got to give it to Andrew, is that Andrew's come in and said, I missed this as I find it very boring to talk about this kind of stuff. And... When me and Amanda used to do the eye test, we used to go and uh, occasionally we'd watch other channels just to make ourselves feel better because we did a far better job. And in all the comments, they were going like on these other channels. They're saying, oh, this should be you, Lawrence, should be on Match of the Day. This is wonderful analysis. And my favourite part about doing this show on Rich's channel is that everyone calls us fucking idiots like non-stop when we're talking about the tactics. <laughs> I think it's absolutely brilliant because it means that we really have to come like, and think about what we're saying and stuff. But um, we've spoken a lot about Arsenal and Zinchenko tonight, Andrew, um, and why why he's like completely changed them as a team, which I, I know you're a fan of Zinchenko, so you might like that. But yeah, that's that's all I've got. Unless, Rich, you've been very quiet. Like, get, uh, give me a rundown. The comments. Third no, runs. I think it's, I think tonight I agree with Amondi. I think tonight's been one of the the best ones for me in terms of like the the explanations, the examples. Really good, particularly with like the way Arsenal play, the the players that they've they've built at the team over a few windows. I think Andrew, Andrew like you said, as a, a fan of Zinchenko, is going to enjoy what we talked about. And I think, you know, it, any football fan is going to enjoy this to some extent. I think you can, you can disagree with the opinions, but people are watching games and making these decisions 
and sort of thoughts themselves, aren't they? You're watching, get, you're watching them thinking, why are Arsenal so effective? Why are we getting um, like overrun in midfield? Why, why are they so effective at what they're doing? And also, actually, what, one thing I would say is I know Vaughan finds this terribly boring when people say we need this player or that player and transfer rumours. Look at some of the players linked to us and it's making a bit of sense in terms of like, like the amount of rumours. And you think, OK, you can see attributes he's got. The same way Arsenal put together a team of players that people said, why are they getting Ben White? He's shite. Why are they getting this goalkeeper? He's shite. Why are they getting... And gradually, they've, they've bought a lot of players that people say are crap individually, which they're, they're, obviously they're not. But they've bought players that are underrated by Arsenal fans at the time, built a crazy good team. And now Arsenal fans are slowly thinking, OK, OK. And it's kind of gone under the Arsenal fans' radar of what's happened. And suddenly they've got this incredible team. And I think maybe Manchester United hopefully we'll do the same. You'll put together a few of these players that people are like, why are we signing him? Why are we signing that? And gradually, over the next year, two years, we will see the same sort of thing. That's what I hope. And I hope that that's one great, thing I've been taking point, from this. Really good point, Rich. And also Liverpool. Don't forget that we've also talked about Liverpool. Thank you, Box. People might not laugh about Morata now and why I wanted him as a player at United because um, he is Harry Kane-like light he's mccain um but yeah the other thing i'd like to say is that even though this is called a tactics show i just want to be very clear we do not talk about anything tactical we talk about basic football principles and like i know, I know that it's quite didactic and it's quite teacherly and all these things but what we're trying to do is we're trying to raise the level a little bit of what goes on on YouTube. Like, I hate talking about takeovers, glazers out, Osserman, transfers, <laughs> referees. Like, all this, all this fucking currency that is used to boost up views. And I'm always delighted that we get people who come in. Like, you know, like Kate, like JR, and definitely George and Andrew and well Marks, up, Big up. Who, who sort of come in, they challenge us, they ask questions. And I really hope that you lads sort of see this bollocks that's on screen when you watch like football matches like you you know you, when 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 we play against arsenal in the uefa cup final hopefully um you'll see like them with this compact formation um we talked about uh Malathia and martinez uh and ericsson quite a lot andrew as well it's a shame that you thought that this show was boring turned in to tell us you thought it was boring mm. um uh, but like, um, it's it's a shame. I think you would have really enjoyed, like, a lot of the show tonight because we didn't mention De Gea once. Only the, only that joke about he he stroll he, oh, yeah. he did leave oh, his yeah. line, didn't he? In the in the diagram, we had to correct that. But George George um corrected us quite early on. With that yeah, one. George got the dig in. Yeah, but I think it's um, it's quite a big part of it. What we were discussing, I think we went. Mm. I, th I think, like, and Andrew is correct that there, there are, like, other things that are involved. Yeah, there, there, there are intangibles. But the thing is, Andrew, right, is that I have, like, I have, like, post postgraduate qualifications and things like leadership and stuff like that. And if we talk about, like, a, like a captain or we talk about, like, how to keep your fitness up and stuff, I, I don't think it's that interesting... Um, to sort of talk about because i will tell you what a leader does you'll all argue with me and then i'll give you like referenced like material and scientific studies and things like that and it will be like my word is final here because the, uh, because it is in that case but with this i don't know i don't know much about tactics to be honest um i know about the basics of football um, and I know that tactics are essentially go wider, go nearer, get at him a bit more. That's what managers are doing. They're like, do a bit more of this, a bit more of that. Um, and I know about training. But what I, what I do know is that half of you know half and less than I think you do. Um, sorry, that means that, I, I, that means is that the majority of people on social media... I think don't play football at any sort of level. And um, when they talk about Winks, McTominay, United and stuff, I find it very annoying that they don't know why you do rondos 
that they don't understand what positional play is and this is why this is why we do it and i'm not calling anyone out or saying that you're all fucking idiots or anything but this is just a resource that when when you hear someone say mctominay doesn't track runners fred and mctominay <laughs> don't go with the runners we've talked about blocks so much that you know that that is that's the intellectual football equivalent of a five-year-old uh, and and as, as, well. As, as well i think look when you talk about teams i like nba basketball there's only they've got so many patterns there so many plays same with um american football there's different plays different plays that they have names to and they can go into detail yeah. with i think with football what makes football brilliant it's been going on for much longer how long has football been going 150 years maybe 160 years and still with in we're developing and involved with evolving Maybe some things are being recycled a lot of the time, but it just shows how the depth of uh, the, of the game. And I think if you love the game, you've got to be able to have some depth and understanding about what you're seeing with your own eyes here. How a team's good. You can compare when people compare great teams from the past, Liverpool's mm. 1980 team or something, to now. How they would fare? There's a, it's a completely different systems being played out. You know, so... I'd love to jump in on this, Amondo, because I had a coach actually in Chile who used yeah. to talk a lot about American football. Mm. And when we were doing transitioning uh, training, which we're going to talk about next week, so the transition to attack, the transition to defence, and, uh, and also other little transitions, he said that the only game that has actual transitions is American football. You yeah. get the players, you, you have an attacking team, and you have a defending team. Yeah. And that yeah. you, uh, you, the way that you attack is done by your defence, and the way you defend mm. is done by your attack. And I, I find I, I'd love to see a bit more of American football because I love that idea of mm. like how there's it's just a set play, and someone's got to defend and someone's got got yeah. to uh, to attack. I think it's it's absolutely fascinating. Um, imagine I, we stop blew the whistle every uh, thirty seconds and the coach come on and. Talk to the guys, right? This is the play now. This is the play now. That's American football. But uh, McTominay is a two hundred million pound player. If that is how we play football, <laughs> if that's how football. <laughs> <laughs> uh, football's so fluent, it's just non-stop, isn't it? I mean, we'll hope the, the games on the on the games running most of the time. Uh, hopefully, uh, for a good game of football. So yeah, it takes a lot, and I think a lot of work goes in behind the scenes for teams to get this to this level. I think. Lately, we've been able to see behind the scenes with the uh, Amazon series, you know, with football to see how much goes oh, on. It gives rub. people a lot more insight into a bit more about what goes on. <laughs> with the with the light bulb. I think it's great, actually, but it's it is funny. And the the other thing that I'd like to jump in on that you said about how you want to see things with depth. One of the most impactful things my father ever taught me was that if you enjoy something, like if you like food, if you like wine, if you like computer games, reading, whatever, don't spend more on it. Educate yourself more and you'll enjoy it far more. Like invest your, t if you love something, invest your time in it and try and understand it and you'll get far more out of it because yeah. you're not going to appreciate all that three grand wine if you can't like tell me why a, a 10 quid bottle from Waitrose is you know is shit like yeah. so yeah. this is this is about like a bit educational this is we're trying to get you to enjoy football matches a bit more lads yeah and yeah I, re I really hope that it, that you do do it because i love doing this show with my football wife for monday um <laughs> even we sorry maybe it will be even like UFC is massive at the moment. I've heard people talk. I don't know much nah. about it, but I hear people talking about, oh, we set him up for that, or the commentators going through, oh, we set him up for a triangle choke hold, or he's going to do this move, or that's setting him up for this, or he's in this position and then how he's positioned himself. So in most sports, you've seen a, a lot of uh, technical depth into things, but the sweet football, science. Was, yeah, yeah. I think it's, NFL it's, is a good example, of Mondi. We are saying that the NFL they usually run twelve plays at the start of any game different plays to work out what the opposition do in each of those situations then the best managers then work out later in the game the best way of winning the game based on what they expect the opposition to do with different tactics it's very tactical i think a lot of um football coaches actually go to the you see them at the super bowl i think southgate was there 
a lot of managers, Link Woodward, the um, rugby coach as well, all the managers for different yeah. sports are sharing different ideas. So there's a lot going on, going on even different sports, trying to learn things from different sports. So it's, like you said, you, you can't learn too much, can you? Whether it's the same sport or not, there's a lot of things you can Transferable gain from Transferable skills. Yeah. yeah. Like there's yeah. so much. You can exactly. And I just, I just want to address a comment from Andrew. Andrew's correcting me. Okay, 15. They run like whatever. Um, 12, 15 players. They run, they run a few. Andrew says it's not about some bullshit Gagan press or whatever. And I know, I know what you, what you mean, Andrew, because like nowadays there are loads of buzzwords, right? Um, and one of the things that we talked about in pressing is that like your midfield doesn't press, your, your defence certainly doesn't press, your midfield man marks or ideally arrives at the precise moment a player takes a touch, which is why Fred is like this idiot savant at pressing. Never seen a player better at arriving when someone takes their first touch. But the thing is, is that all of these things, right, even though they're buzzwords and people don't understand them, they are part of football and they have been part of football since the start. So, like, I know that you think that me and Amonde talk a lot of bollocks and stuff. Um, and also, um, there's been a lot of Harry Winks and Pogba should be a right back tonight, which I've, apparently I've been vindicated on. But, um, <laughs> like, um, but the thing is, is that these things are really old, is what I'm trying to say, is that inverted fullbacks were in like a Wolves team in the 1950s and stuff. It's nothing. It's it's nothing new. And what what we what we're trying to do is we're not trying to hide behind bullshit. We're trying to explain to you what the principles of football are. And you might not accept that they're principles of football, but this whole show is built on the concept of space, and that is the most important thing in football. Like, so we're not going to talk about the preparation of the players, mental attitude, stuff like that, because that's a completely different type of show. But it's, I understand that you think it's bullshit, but what we are talking is not bullshit. It is we're trying to cut through the bullshit. That's the point. So that when bullshitters come in and talk about fucking registers in a 4231 or something like that, you know it's bullshit because pretty much every team plays three at the back that are any good. But there, there, there you go. <laughs> oh, now he's brought up McTominay. Yeah, fair, fair enough. Like Scott, I, I think Scott McTominay is absolutely fantastic um, in a block. I, I, I like him a lot, and I think that he is almost cis, like he's almost an emblem or a totem of why people need need to watch football properly because there is no one in football that doesn't think that scott mctominay isn't a good footballer right like his teammates his coaches other like you know this like fucking newcastle are full of like the saudi money and stuff and they're after mctominay because they know they know what he can offer and the thing is if you go and ask these gobby girls that you like, or you go and ask other people on social media, what is Scott McTominay good at? What will they say? They'll say nothing. He's absolute bollocks. What does that suggest to you? It suggests that they don't know what they're talking about. Right? And, like, I'm not saying that I understand everything about football. Or that I know everything. I've always been quite clear that all of this just comes from the fact that I train and love the game. But this is why I big up players like Scott McTominay because I know what he's doing and he does it very well. Mm. I, I love Palestri. I think he's uh, he's off the ball movement. He's gone in Spain for the last two years, and I think he's grown up in South America, Uruguay as well. So if you compare, look at Ganacho, look at uh, Palestri. They're two different players. Uh, he, he's not as fast as Ganacho or direct, but his off the ball movement, his understanding at his young age is awesome. And I think um, that's why he's so effective when you, people are starting to appreciate him now. Um, it's not about the physical, it's about a lot of mental with him. And I love him as a player. I want to see him develop at the club. I'd love to see him today. Yep, same here. I, I agree. Well, I like, I... Yeah, I'd like to see more of Plastia. I think he looks absolute quality. I know a lot of players get hyped up. I think he does look very good as well. I think I think like um, 
I know Garnacho has been hyped up, and it's no secret that I I think Garnacho needs to go back to the reserves and learn more basics. Um, but Palestri, I really really like the look at. I love the fat his hair is like a nineteen seventies <laughs> <70s laughs> helmet. <laughs> Um, I, th- I, I think it's fantastic. When Scott is on our team, we're vulnerable to any press. Yeah, I was thinking about this earlier, Andrew, when because we were talking about like uh, technically secure players in our team, and this might be absolutely biased, but I remember like against like at the weekend when we played against Southampton and against Arsenal that I don't think McTominay is as bad as people think in the press. I think he's able to turn out of problems certainly better than bruno is um but i agree with you i wouldn't call him press resistant which is why at the start of the show when we talked about the box midfield i said that i think that mctominay isn't going to be isn't going to be able to play in it and will be phased out over the next two to three years um but i would say in our team he doesn't make us any i think he makes us less vulnerable to the press Um, uh, absolutely brilliant um, squad player, like, and I, I think Fred should probably be in the squad. Like, uh, I wouldn't play him in the first team, but he does have incredible attributes that are useful. But you don't get to good Man subs to have on, player. aren't they? Yeah, like, I, I, th- I think, I think that's it. Is that like, um, you know, like every team in the league would take McTominay on the wages that he's paid. Um, like even City and Arsenal, in order to just bring him on for like certain situations and stuff. And, you know, remember that uh, Chaka and Henderson were both severely disliked by Arsenal fans for quite a long time. You never know what might happen with McTominay. Like, well, Ahmad's playing a lot of century, playing really central for Sunderland as well. So that would help his with experience going on loan. But yeah, everyone seems to be excited about him for what he's doing, his numbers, performances for Sunderland at the moment. Yeah, he's um, I've like uh, I've I've got a friend who still lives in the northeast, and um, he's a big he's a big Cats fan, like Sunderland fan, um, and he has said that he he hasn't seen a player as good as Ahmed since the Premiership years. Wow! Like that. Wow! The, like the, wow. the other thing he did say is that Ahmed. Um, really lacks fitness and that he very very rarely makes it um past 70 minutes okay but he's pretty much always subbed off uh on the 70th or the 75th minute um but i'm quite excited about ahmed coming back to the team because i think if anthony didn't have a left foot i don't think he'd be anywhere near the first team so ahmed coming to a bit of competition quite excited Could ahmed play in the box yeah, I think so. He's yeah. um, he's 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 a goblin, isn't he? I don't know how big his ass is, um, <laughs> but like he's he's a goblin. What's That's this? your homework for the it's next more one. More McTominay slander. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know what you mean <laughs> about ter- like the thing is right. Is what I would say about McTominay, and you can all like go mad about this, but I think that we played better football and we controlled games far better with McTominay and Ericsson than we have with Casemiro and Fred. Like that might be because Ericsson has elevated McTominay or whatever, but we're going to see four or five games from McTominay coming up. Like um, and we'll we'll see how we'll see how he gets on and stuff. And I I don't think he's going to let us down. Um, I think that when you saw him in the second half the other day, he went to ground once and he won the ball. He didn't get booked. He led the block. Um, he helped Bruno through it. He helped Palestri through it. Um, he got the ball up the pitch quickly, intercepted. He played extremely well. And whilst you might not need that, like in a possession team when we're playing. You know, I don't know when we're playing someone at home. But what you also have to remember is that against Betis, it took us three minutes to get the ball back. That's shocking. I was going to guess in seconds. I, I was, when G Wolf said, was it 15 seconds or nine seconds? What, I was I thinking, said nine okay, seconds. maybe it's more than that. <laughs> no, because yeah, it's yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
like, in the first half, I'm pretty it? sure that it was for nine seconds. It was not nine seconds. Like no. I, as I say, I didn't do this. I saw someone else I know did this, where he did the the average, and he said it was between. It was it was nearer two and a half than three minutes. But I like to round uh, things quickly. But it was about two and a half minutes. But what I can still, tell you is that Southampton, when we had eleven men, kept the ball better than we did. Like, Casemiro was constantly losing it. Bruno was constantly losing it. Like, one of, uh, bizarrely, one of the only players that was keeping the ball properly was Aaron Wan-Bissaka, who I don't think has a future at United, like, beyond the season. But I've always said he's one of our best players at getting out mm. from the back. And I think that Sabitza, I liked his first game against Leeds, but... He hasn't really sort of stepped it up enough. And Vekhorst, I know he's a bet noir in chat, but he does keep the ball. And I think that McTominay keeps the ball. You, I know he's called McSideways and things like this, and Amondo was talking about this earlier. What team makes the most sideways passes in the Premier League? Man City. Exactly. You need to make sideways passes because you need to look after the ball. Like... And this is what the box midfield is about. It's about looking after the ball. Is there any football on? I want to take in some games. Uh, it's Champions League week. We've got Liverpool playing uh, Real Madrid. Uh, that should that. be a good one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. I'm looking to tune in now and, and box, box, box to see how these tough sides set up. Yeah, shout out to what Box. So Happy birthday, yeah. Box. Yeah, exactly. Box no, missed no, the joke, no, yeah. didn't he, sadly? He missed the joke at the start of the stream, birthday. but... Yeah, please don't give any John. personal information to John Hand. He asks quite a lot from people, and I know that some of you have like learning issues. Like, be careful. Yeah, again, thanks. Bath time for that. So good to <laughs> talk about football. Like I said, um, I'm not going to comment on other channels, other podcasts. Everyone's interested in different things, but great to talk about. The game and whether you think it, people think it's tactics or bullshit, I, yeah. you know, it's good to have a chat about that sort of thing anyway. And I think actually you, you like being challenged, so I do. Bring bring your agenda next Monday and we'll discuss it. It'll be fun. Uh, and Wandy, always a pleasure to get you on. A great Thank you, to... Rich. Make sure you subscribe, guys. You probably already are, and just share it with people. Just say, have you seen the show on Rich Sports? Yeah, do you know what I said to people? Um, people on, I think on, I posted something on Instagram. I said. Uh, watch it, come with questions, because that makes it you know, all the more interactive, all the more fun. And also, if you got, if you know people are interested in discussing football, just send send them a link, see what they think. Because if they if they think, you know, if we're talking nonsense or they think it's... You know, either way, it'd be good to get more people in the discussion just to see what people think and just talk about the game rather than red card or fouls. So let's just talk about football. And, and G-Wolf... Thanks yep. for joining again. I know you're, you're Jeez, green brother. screen upset, Vaughn, but <laughs> um, Big cheers everyone in the comments as well. Everyone that's made everyone. it to like midnight, th cheers for getting the questions in. And I think it's just it's just it covers everything, Andrew, doesn't it? It's whether you're interested in a formation or a tactic, or the reason why we're interested in buying players, the reason why other teams are getting success. It's, it covers everything. <laughs> so, my question is why why are you not interested in it? Fair enough. I just yes. think that like, because I've said this before that like um uh, Andrew despite like you know a lot of things that Andrew says Andrew's always struck me as someone who has like a, a decent understanding of the game. Like he I know he's he's told us stories about like losing 15-0 in Sunday league and people being no, sick on the pitch. He is and, interested in this, I think. I just, I just, I just, I feel, I feel it's my responsibility, Andrew, as someone who does like football, to sort of make you like this stuff, to get more out of it. But I'm beginning to feel that I'm being played by, by a cock tease, really, who's just sort of <laughs> telling me that I don't like this, but I'm still sort of here and things. And I'm just like, <laughs> Oh I, my God. I feel like I feel like he's running game on me a little bit. Like you know, I don't like this. He's teasing you. Yeah, 
it's a, a clock tease. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a fun of what. No comebacks. <laughs> That's brilliant. Fuck me, it's like doing a show with Dr. Hibbert from The Simpsons. (laughs) (laughs) I I think Andrew knows more than he lets on. I'll say that. I think he knows more than he lets on. (laughs) I think (laughs) that (laughs) will... Jesus Christ, a Monday. This is probably a good time to wrap it up. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks everyone for watching. <laughs> uh, see you on next Monday, guys. That's it, he's gone. Good night. That's a good one, man. <laughs> see you later, guys. <laughs>